Welcome to ASMR with Ifrit Overgrowth. Okay, I'm just kidding. We're gonna play some Remnant from the Ashes. Yes, this game is free on the PlayStation Store right now. I highly suggest giving it a go. Now, for what I've noticed about this game, it's very... It's like Dark Souls, but with guns. That's pretty much all I can say to explain that, really. So it's kind of, you know, dungeon crawling, fighting bosses. Sometimes the difficulty is a bit not in your favour whatsoever, but anyway. There'll be a few cutscenes and a bit of talk in this first episode, so I will shut up and let that happen. But after that, it should be pretty straightforward. So, let's go for the cutscene, and I'll talk to you when the game begins. What can we do when our last hope fails? That you must discover. Our last hope sailed this sea before you in search of an end to the beasts that have hunted us for generations. An end was found. Or so we thought. When the dragon rose into the sky like a phoenix, blazing in flames of agony, but our hero never came home. Only the storm, the beasts, the unshakable dread that something had twisted and turned. Your journey will not be easy. Storm swirls round the dragon's tower like a shroud. The dragon may be dead, but in its ashes, I fear something else has awoken. You will fight for every step. You must reach the tower, learn what became of our warrior, face what lurks within. When our last hope fails, another shall take its place. So long as we have breath. Right, yeah, we losers. Let's get this show on the road. That's right, I'm calling you all losers. Deal with it. Here we go then. Right, so now I've got control again. I mean, the game looks fantastic, you know. Apparently, it's from the guys that made Dark Siders Free, I believe. So yeah, visually quite a nice game. Mechanics of the game, spot on. I actually really enjoy it. It's highly addictive, though. I'm just going to throw that out, okay? This game is highly addictive. Not just addictive; it's highly addictive, okay? So what you're basically doing, it's like any Souls game, you're collecting gear, you're upgrading gear, you're trying not to die every two seconds and look like a loser, but that's pretty much how that goes. But obviously this changes things up because you're not running in with swords or bows and stuff, you're, it's a gun game, basically. It's a third person shooter, but with the kind of difficulty and build of the Dark Souls games. Which is something I'm pretty fond of, to be honest. So let's just crawl our way through here. Someone's making a racket upstairs. Excellent. Alright, here we go then. Start slapping you about with my sword, why not? So the enemies in this are like your typical birch and chestnut trees, but they're, they're a wee bit nastier than a birch or chestnut tree. Try to think of any other 
trees that I know the name of. Um, an evergreen. There we go. Or uh, uh, a spruce. Yeah, a spruce. Or oh, pine. Pine's a good tree. It's a good strong tree, you know. Pine tree. <laughs> Anyway, let's uh, try not die. This is basically just a tutorial. Surprise, little tree man. Yeah, so these guys are called the root. Hence my tree jokes, you know. And they're mostly the bad guys of this game. However, when I get a gun on the go, this might be a wee bit better. Because melee in this game is dreadful if you ask me. Not that the melee itself is dreadful, it's just you don't want to be that close to the enemies in this game. You don't want to be that close that you need to use a sword. Alright, so we'll just continue on up here. There's a lot of noise happening over that way, we'll just continue up here. I can see that wee guy like dangling for the roof there. We'll just run at him. Get a running start, stab him in the gut. <laughs> so anyway guys, I'm going to make a little series out of this, I'm going to try and play it through, there'll be a lot of fails, I can guarantee, because the bosses in this are, some of them are absolutely hilariously hard, but I'll try my best, I'll try my best to make that entertaining, I'll probably show my fails, because that might make it even more entertaining, no doubt, you sick people out there. Yeah, it's quite a fun game. It does ask for quite a few playthroughs due to... Oh, cutscene, hold on. Hi there. Whoa, take it slow. You got hurt real bad. You don't want to start bleeding again, do you? I'm Wallace. I wanted to see you. I asked the commander if I could. Oh, Commander Ford and Mr. Riegler found you outside. They brought you here. But they said... They said Mark wasn't coming back. But he's... He was... Never mind. The commander said you should come see her when you woke up. She's in the room down the hall. She'll find a place for you. Everyone's got a place. I'll see you later. So like I was saying, guys, it does call for a couple of playthroughs because there is... A, I suppose to a degree a randomization 
in this game, as the bosses you face might not be the bosses someone else faces in their game, because there is quite a few. Anyway, there's got to be another cutscene, I'll shut up again. Well, well, look who's awake. You put up quite a fight outside our gates. I'm Commander Ford. This is my base, and you, friend, are an unexpected guest. It's my job to know the kind of people I bring into Ward 13. We haven't seen a living soul on that shore for weeks. You will tell me why you were really out there, or... Hmm. No one has been in that tower in a very long time. But you've got no chance of getting there in this storm. Truth is, the ward has been cut off. We had to block the gates after we dragged you in. The root are everywhere. But... Now that you're here, I have an idea. I'll tell you what. You want to leave? You'll have to do something for us first. First, we need power. That storm knocked out our reactor recently. With enough power, we might be able to activate another way out of here. The reactor is on the lower basement level. There's a stairwell that leads down to it. Get it running, then come back here. <laughs> Nothing around here is easy. Watch your back. We already lost a man down there a few days ago. I suspect the Root have found a way in. Go check in with Riggs. About your blade. I don't imagine your fists will do much against the Root. You do this for us, and I'll make sure you get out of here. So I've played this game quite a quite a fair bit now. I've seen quite a few of the bosses, but I know there's ones that I've not even seen. I know there's some rare bosses to get, and obviously you beat a boss, and from that boss you'll get like a weapon or armor, an upgrade, a mod, something like that from them. So it's it's a fun game, like, and you can play it with. Uh, there can be up to three people on your team, which is good for multiplayer. I'll shut up again. Hey, it's good to see you on your feet again. Uh, welcome to Ward 13. I did what I could to patch you up. You seem like a tough one, though. <laughs> Name's Riggler. <laughs> Most everyone calls me Riggs. Well, your uh, sword mm. was pretty banged up in the fight. Not much I could do with it, I'm afraid. The blade was shattered when we found you. Mostly scrap metal at this point. I think I remember Ace mentioned she found a few weapons out in the city. Maybe she'll help you out. Well, uh, last I heard, Ace went down to check out the reactor. Good luck down there. You lost? Yeah, so as I was saying, you, you can play up to three players, that does make the world harder though. I'm um, just going to throw that out there. If you've got three players, the enemies will be tougher. But it's always fun to play with other people, at least that way you can kind of draw the attention oh, of a boss or an enemy away from yourself so you can flank them or whatever. So it's quite fun, if you've got a little bunch of friends that will play it with you, then you just could take a blast on this. And it is great fun for what I played, and as I said, highly, highly addictive. There's got to be another cutscene, so I'm going to have to shut up again. I'm doing a lot of shutting up this video, I didn't like that. What is that all about? What? Where the hell did you come from? You nearly scared the life out of me. No one else wandering around down here. Uh, you're not from around here, are you? Name's Ace. Ace Cotterill? You? That right? Well, you found it. Starting that relic could mean trouble, though. So, you ever start a reactor? Well, it makes a lot of noise, for starters. Lucky for you, it's just the press of a button on the terminal above us. Would have done it myself, but without knowing what might come sniffing around. 
With the two of us, though, maybe we got a chance. Okay, so I have an idea. You go upstairs and start the reactor. I'll help you kill whatever comes our way. You probably need a weapon, huh? Let's see if I can find you something. Right, so now I get to pick my kind of starting character, if you will. Now, the hunter, that's your ranged character. Uh, the middle one, uh, the ex-cultist, that is your kind of medium range character. And on the far right, uh, the far right? Far right. <laughs> I can't bloody speak, man. What is this? This is your scrapper. He's the one that gets up into your face and stuff, which I do not recommend for this game. I would recommend either taking the ex-cultist or the hunter. Now I will play a hunter due to I like the rifle the hunter comes with, but to be fair it doesn't matter which of these three you pick, because you can build yourself into whatever kind of build you really want. So this is just a start and gun thing. Get up there and start the reactor. Okay, we're going to go start this reactor and then we're going to get to shoot some folk. But as you see here, we have our repeater pistol and we have a, what's it called? The hunting rifle. The hunting rifle, I quite like. Until I can get my sniper rifle, I quite like the hunting rifle. Because I've always been a rifle man. Uh, if, if you know this about me, anyone that's played Call of Duty with me or whatever, I like my rifles. Right, so let's get this started. And then we're going to get attacked by the birch trees, the chestnut trees, and the spruces are coming out to play. I'm going to have to look up some more names of trees. There we go. Look at that. It's a thingy beauty. The hunting rifle. Ten shots to a cliff, it can fire pretty quickly. It's a nice little gun. So in this game, the most important kind of things are watching your bullets, uh, watching your positioning, and knowing when to dodge. Because uh, you have to kind of learn attack patterns in this game. Kind of like the Dark Souls games, that when it comes to a boss you have to learn how they fight. Otherwise, you're going to have a bit of a hard time against them. Because sometimes you can't just stand there and lay bullets into them because a lot of them are built for you not to be able to do that, basically. Which is pretty awesome. Not going to lie. And one thing I have noticed about this game is the enemy AI actually seems very clever. As you'll see as we're going through it, uh, a lot of the time they don't just kind of come at you in a straight line that you'd expect. They'll try and sneak around, they'll hide behind things, they'll try and get behind you to flank you. Which is quite clever for a game that uh, every time you get hit it takes a big chunk of your health bar so uh, you have to be very careful not to get hit too much in this. Hence why I don't think running up and doing this, the melee attacks, is a good idea. Because that's put you far too close into their face for retaliation and you're taking your sights off enemies that might be nearby that can attack from range. And I'm starting to do that voice, you know, that informative voice, the one I'm trying to tell you information. Don't really know why I'm doing that voice. It's not a good look on me, it's not how I speak. Yeah. And he's all like, oh, look at that wee fire guy. Ha <laughs> ha, so awesome, mate. Wee fire man. Oh, I'll shut up again. choice sending you down here. You best go check in with Ford. Come visit my shop sometime, yeah? I'll make sure to give you the good in a fight discount. Alright, nice, nice, nice. Right, we're moving along through the tutorial 
pretty decent here. I can tell you although after this kind of whole tutorial section, maybe this video and the next video, after that there isn't that much talking in this game, it then becomes just action. Just bosses and me trying my hardest not to die, no doubt. Quite interested to see what bosses I get on this playthrough. I'm doing that voice again, aren't I? I'll shut up again, thank god for that. You're risking a lot for folks you don't know, stranger. Ah, uh, yes. You're trying to get yourself to that little island, yeah? Word moves fast, when there ain't many words left around here. Listen, friend, uh, I know you don't know me from a can of paint, but I want to help. You, uh, you got a feeling of destiny about you. <laughs> You're going to save the world, ain't you? That's the spirit. Uh, here, I want you to have this. Not many people can keep the spirits out there in the world. An old friend told me this little bobble could keep you for death at bay. At least for a while. And if you're looking to buy other treasures for your travels, come see me. Ace has got her own space over there. <laughs> Between us, we got all sorts of treasures. With that stone there, free of charge. Take good care of it. Oh, one more thing. Ellen, uh, Commander Ford, she knows more about that island than she lets on. Uh, ask her about the founder of Ward 13. She'll get you on your path. <laughs> Good to see a new face around here. Okay, any of you guys that have made it this far in my video, well done. Well done. There is a word for today. Today's word is limeade. That's right, guys. Limeade. You know the juice? It's like lemonade, but it's lime, you know? Limeade. Put that down in the comments below just so I know who's managed to sit through my rambling and intellectual informational voice. I'm even doing it just saying that. That is. I need to just go back to my Scottish roots and just talk how I actually talk, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway. Anyone that has made it this far, thank you so much, that means a lot, and if I see the limeade word, then I'll pay attention to you a lot more. <laughs> but anyway, let's listen to some more chat, Glad shall we? See you got the reactor running. <laughs> and I see Reggie gave you the dragon heart. <sighs> he wouldn't part with an artifact that powerful without a good reason. Then... I imagine he said I could help you. <laughs> Very well. Reggie may play the old fool, but his judgment is rarely off the mark. You've proven yourself reliable, stranger. I'm willing to help you get on your way. But I doubt you'll last long out there without help. Go see Riggs and McCabe downstairs. They'll fit you with better gear. Come see me afterwards. Nice, so the start of this game is a lot of run here, talk to that person, run there, talk to this person. But once we're out into the kind of game world, if you will, uh, things just move forward very much. There's none of this running about as much. This place is kind of just your main hub where you come back to do upgrades and that, but I guess it needs to teach you that before you do it. And let's shut up again, Ian. Hey, just friend. shut up. Ah, thanks for getting the power back on. Ford mentioned we should help you get sorted for the city, as a thanks for getting us out of a bind. Ah, maybe we can put your old blade to good use after all. Ah, let me look. Take your time. Hey, friend. <laughs> All right. Hey, now that's better. Oh, and uh, take this. It's not the strongest stuff, but more protection than what you've got. Ah, there you go. A bit sturdier. Every little bit counts out there.
It's true. We don't have much, but you did right by us. Best we do right by you. If you need any weapon upgrades in the future, come see me. McCabe over there will help you out with the augments for your gear. But, uh, stick to business talk. You know, she's not much for chat beyond her work. So you're the stray Ford was talking about. <sighs> Said we should get you equipped for the city. Doesn't make sense to me, giving away good parts for nothing. Apparently taking out a few root is enough for our commander, though. Ford's gonna give my time to every stray who wanders in. And we're having words. I'm McCabe. I'm the engineer. And you're a pain in my ass. I'm not some scrap peddler, got it? I don't upgrade trash. All right, then. Let's see what we're dealing with here. From the look of that rifle, you're not getting close to the action. This'll keep those weeds in your sights. That's all you get for now. Get me more components and I'll make more. For a fee. Now get out of here. I'm tired of your yapping jaw. Yeah, yeah. Right, so she gives us our first mod for a gun, basically. Now the Hunter one's quite good because when it's activated you can basically get wall hacks. You can see through walls and it helps get critical hits. So, I don't actually want that on my pistol, I would rather that be on my rifle. Because critical with the rifle damage is pretty, pretty sweet mate, it's pretty sweet mate, it's absolutely oh, spot on, limeade type sweet, you know what I'm saying? But anyway guys, that'll do for this video, we'll finish off the tutorial on the next one and I'll also do a little secret bit I suppose how to get the submachine gun before going out into the real world so we'll do that in the next one and then well, we'll see where this game takes us hopefully you enjoy this game I'm loving it it's very addictive and I'll see you all real soon